from McGill. And um, so in the next 18 minutes, I'm going to share with you our latest development uh, in assembly code clone search. And uh, we have developed a system called Camino uh, to support the operation of reverse engineering. And this is a collaborative project between McGill and uh, DRDC, Defense Research and Development Canada. So in reverse engineering, we assume the reverse engineer has access to a binary executable file and would like to mo know more about the functionality of that executable file without having the source code. And um, so the first step that you have to do is to disassemble the binary file into assembly code and try to understand function by function. So and uh, in, in reverse engineering, it is often the primary step to analyze a piece of malware to, to detect uh, software plagiar uh, plagiarism. And the major challenge in uh, reverse engineering is the volume of the assembly code. Uh, given a small piece of code like this, we can easily end up with thousands of lines of um, assembly code or million lines of uh, code for larger binary files. So uh, you, as you can imagine, if you have to read this assembly code uh, line by line, it's a very time consuming and tedious process, even for the, ex for the very ex experienced reverse engineer. And because of this, okay, so based on my non-scientific non -scientific bias observation, I find that the reverse engineer, they usually have higher salary than the ordinary software engineer. And they also relatively have less hair than, um, <laughs> than the normal software engineer. As a data mining guy, I cannot really help them to reverse engineer their hair 20 years back. Uh, but what, what we can do is to develop some data mining tool to make their life a little bit easier, okay? Um, so given a, a piece of assembly code function, what they usually do is to, tran is to transform the function into a control flow graph. A control flow graph is a sequence of basic blocks you can consider the basic block are like a logical segmentation of the assembly code. And then the control flow graphs also provide an overview of the logic uh, of that function. So you can see this is a, this is a conditional statement, and this is a loop. Okay, and then the, 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 the reverse engineer can start putting comments on the, on the assembly code. And in Camino, we allow the user to to store a large volume of commented or not commented assembly code in a repository. So in here, we assume the, 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 uh, the reverse engineer is constructing a large repository of assembly code. This, this, this assembly code can be coming from, can be a malware executable file, or they can be open source libraries, okay? And then when a new piece of malware, new uh, binary comes in, uh, the user can put this into Camino and Camino will quickly find that, oh, this sequence of blocks are coming from the, from the file on the left-hand side, and this is the same, and these blocks are coming from this file. And then the user can start transferring the comments from the repository to the new malware so that the reverse engineer can focus on the rest of the functions of that malware. So the data mining problem in here is how can we find, how can we efficiently find these uh, subgraph clones? Okay, we want to find this clone uh, of this um, malware and um, from, from a large repository, okay? So this is the data mining problem. And these are the challenges we have to address. We want to make sure it is accurate. To, when we say this is clone, we want to eliminate the false positive. Uh, we want to be able to uh, handle this in an efficient and scalable manner uh, because of the size of the assembly code. And we would like to have a way to incrementally update the, the, the repository. We want to be able to visualize the clone results and has the flexibility to handle uh, finding clones uh, from binary with different CPU architectures, compiler, and diff different optimization options. Okay, so these are the challenges we want to address. So how do we actually find the clones? We, uh, we have two, two steps. The first step is to use hashing. Okay, we use some. We have a customized LSH uh, hashing method to find the clone pair at the block level. At the block level, so by applying our customized LSH method, we may find that okay, these two red blocks are the same or similar. So we allow some kind of fuzzy matching in here, and then we allow, uh, and then we find that oh, these two blue blocks are the same, and then the next step is to merge this clone pair. So we find all this clone pair from the repository, 
and the new and the new uh, ex executable file. The next step is to merge this clone pair. So how do we merge? We will just look at this. Okay, so we, we find that the red block is calling the blue block, and the correspond corresponding uh, blue block is called by this red block. So you are, we are trying to form a circular reference in here. So the whole process of finding the clones is to find this circular reference. And we want to incrementally expand this circular reference to find the maximal subgraph clone. Okay, so this is the general idea behind the, the, uh, how do we find clones. The next step is how can we do this efficiently in a scalable manner. So in Camino, this is the overall uh, structure of Camino. Um, at the lowest level, we have the Cassandra database. It's a no SQL distribu distributed database. On top of it, we have the Apache Spark, which is a map reduce framework responsible to assign the workload to different nodes on a cloud. So we, are, we have a cloud-based solutions. And then on top of it, on top of this is our Camino engines responsible to main logics, doing hashing, and assigning the work to the Apache Spark engines. And Camino is a web application, so uh, we we have a web interface. We have a web interface to allow the user to visualize the, cl the clone. And in addition, we have an IDA Pro plugin. So um, IDA Pro is the most commonly used reverse engineering tool. Uh, and uh, we have a plugin to allow the user to directly uh, connect to the Camino engines without using the web interface. And last year, we submitted these uh, solutions, uh, this software to IDA Pro plugin uh, competitions, and we got the second prize award last year. Um, we also submit this uh, framework to ACM Security, which is the top data mining conference. It's still under review. I hope it will get accepted. And, uh, but to make sure that this is not just a research paper sitting on a professor's website. We are going to uh, do a software demonstration. I will need uh, Stephen's help on this. Okay. So I will be doing the talking, and he will be doing the operations. Okay. Um, so this is the interface uh, of Camino. And uh, before we do the search, let's take a look at the uh, administrator dashboard. So if you scroll down. You can see that now we have uh, 10 uh, binary files has already been uh, in the indexed. And uh, those are the, many of them are the Chromium-based browser, including Chromium, Dragon, Fire, uh, Opera, and SRWare Iron. And we have a non-Chromium-based uh, browser, which is uh, Firefox. And we have some open source library, let's say libpng and zlib. So if you scroll up, you can see that in our repository current, we have indexed uh, for this demonstration, we have indexed 10 files, 1.4 million um, functions, and uh, 16 million blocks. So this is a small demonstration. So now we can do a search. Uh, this is like a Google search text box. The, the user can just simply copy and paste a piece of assembly code in here. In this particular example, we are doing a search on the $8.32, which is a function from Zlib. And the purpose of this function is to uh, verify the, the, che the checksum of a packet. So we can do a search. And uh, on the left-hand side in here, you can see this is a, we call it clone graph, a clone graph. And uh, the, the node in the middle represents the function we are searching for. So this is the $8.32. And the node surrounding it represents the, the, the corresponding clone functions we found in the repository. And we use the color. We use color to represent different files. And by double clicking on the node in the middle, you can see a list of clone functions in the repository sorted by similarity. So this is the score of similarity in here. So one, a score one means that they have a perfect match. And uh, the one that is, is, is like they have still some overlap, but it's not an exact clone. So let's take a look at the point x 71 OK, so this is, mm, yeah, OK, so. So on the, you can see there are two control flow graph in here. The control flow graph on the left-hand side in here represents the A32. This is the one that we have just input. <coughs> and this is the corresponding clone function uh, in, fi in, uh, Firefox, in Firefox. So you can see just by looking at the overall uh, uh, flow, you, you can see that the, um, the general structure is the same. And we use color. We use color to, to highlight the, the clone uh, region. So this is, this is a light blue. So you can see that the main logic is almost the same, 
but the way they handle the input variables are different. So this is what uh, we find across. And if, you, if, if the user wants to take a closer look, they can zoom into the, um, into, the, into the graph and find that, okay, this block, this purple block, is actually the same as this purple block. Okay. Uh, and this could be very useful uh, for reverse engineering. Un unfortunately, we don't, have, we don't have a way to measure how much hair we can keep because of doing this. Um, and then if you scroll down, you can see uh, this is a text div view. It's a typical way to compare two pieces of text for source code or assembly code. And on the other hand, we, have the, uh, we organize the assembly code by a clone pair. So the user can browse into the assembly code by, by pair of clones. And we have the flexibility to allow them to uh, enter some comments uh, into this uh, text box. So this is the uh, interface for searching for one functions. But in real life, the investig or the reverse engineer may want to find the clones for the um, for for a large executable file. So in Camino, we also allow them to simply drag an executable file into our Camino system. Let's say in this case. Uh, the user can drag uh, a, chrom a Chromium executable file to, the, to our system. And in Chromium, there are about uh, 164,000 functions. It means we want to search for the clone for each of these functions. Okay? So and, uh, since Chromium is a very large binary file, we have to break, break it into multiple pages. So in here, you can see multiple pages of assembly code uh, by address. Let's take a look, maybe page one. Yeah. So in, in, this, in this column, uh, it represents the, the, the functions in the, in, on, on page one of, of the uh, chromium. And each line here, each single line here, represents one function. And you can see most of them are blue because in our repository, we already have chromium in our, in, in our repository. So correspondingly, you can see that um, uh, uh, most of the functions are clone functions of another Chromium file in our repository. And uh, by looking at the, at the upper portion, we can also find out what is the next most similar uh, binary file in our, in our, re in our repository. So uh, Chromium is exactly the same. And the next uh, most similar uh, uh, browser will be the SRWare Iron, which is also a Chromium-based browser followed by uh, Opera and Dragon. So by looking at the red portion, you can see how much overlap they have. And uh, in here, you can see this is a Firefox. So Firefox is not a Chromium-based uh, browser. They still share certain part of the common uh, libraries. So this is why they have this red portion in here. Am I doing good in, on time? OK. So. Um, Yes, okay, yeah, thank you. So we will go back to the um, uh, slides. So we conducted uh, extensive ex experiments on uh, Camino. We try to compare Camino with 12 other competitors. Although many of them are not scalable, we still try to make our best effort to do a fair comparison in terms of recall and positions and uh, on 10 different open source libraries. And we find that we, uh, we, in terms of recall and precision and scalability, we outperform all the competitors. Uh, we also pay a, spend a lot of time to make sure this is efficient and scalable. So we do uh, extensive tests uh, from uh, 10,000 functions to 2.3 million functions. And then we find that on average, it takes about 20 milliseconds to index one function. And in order to search a function, to search for the clones of a function, it takes about one second. And this is a really good result, very good result. And uh, these are the features of Camino. I'm not going to repeat them again, but I haven't talked about one very important feature. Are you ready? It's free, OK? Uh, it's free and, uh, yeah, good. Uh, it's free and uh, it's um, open source. So um, uh, the older version of Camino is already on GitHub, and we will release the, late, the later version when we got our paper accepted, OK? And, um, and the, for the future work, we will put our focus more on the malware uh, instead of just the ordinary binary files. And we will also focus on the clone search on, uh, across different uh, CPU architectures, that, uh, that mean the binaries from different CPU ar ar architectures. And um, 
Finally, I would like to give the credit to Stephen. He is the real engines behind doing all the implementation. I'm just the interface to present the, mat the mat mat materials in here. And uh, we're looking for industrial uh, co uh, collaborators. I cannot speak on behalf of the RDC, but in general, we are looking for collaborators from the industry. Thank you very much. Thank you.